G'day. This is a video about the hop missile. Uh, yes, I know a lot of people will say it's just another version of Blickman's hop rocket, and you'll be right. <laughs> That's what it is. But uh, I don't get to see much Blickman stuff here in Australia, and to be honest, when I do see it, which is very, very rarely, there's no way I can afford it. I'm not saying it's good. John Blickman's an awesome bloke. I talk to him in the Homebrew Network, but we just don't get much of his equipment here, and when we do, it's very expensive. So I thought I'd have a go at this option. It's something I'd always wanted to try. Um, and so when I saw them, I grabbed one. Now, just to show you, this, these aren't usually, these cam look fittings aren't usually on here, either, either that or that. It's just a, a thread, half inch thread and you can put whatever you want on there. I put these on there just to make it easy to attach and detach. Before we get into it, before this beer goes warm and flat, um, this is the Apocalypse Brew Beer. It is the beer that you saw me use the hot missile in uh, a few weeks ago. It is Again, I'll say it again, I'll say it to everybody, it's a lot lighter in colour in real life than it looks on camera. This is a really light straw. Um, and it's turned out really well. I was a bit worried in the recipe, if you didn't know, I only used a tiny little bit of bittering. There was no flavouring hops at all besides I used the hop missile. And then I gave it a little bit of a dry hop. But uh, in the hop missile was 50 grams of uh, Galaxy and 25 grams of New Zealand Halito. Um, I would have used all 75 Galaxy, except I just was, it was a test, I'd never used one before, and I wanted to keep 50 grams for another beer to try. Now, there was a dry hop, small, I don't remember offhand, you'll have to watch the recipe video. But this has come up really nice. It was the one I used the shop bought uh, wheat, and I was a little bit down on my numbers. I added a little bit of uh, sugar, or was it dextrose, sugar or dextrose, I don't know. Again, you have to watch the video for the details. It's been a few weeks now. And I thought it was going to be not much at the start, to be honest, but it's come up a treat. There's a nice aroma. Uh, I don't think that's all from the dry hop. I think a lot of it is from the, the hop missile. And there's this beautiful galaxy flavor. It's light from the wheat um, and the, the very light malt bill that it was. Uh, and it had oats in it as well, so it's a little bit cloudy. But it's just like a Pacific Ale. That's exactly what it reminds me of when I drink it. Whether it be stone and wood or one of the others, it's actually a lot better, a lot better than one, uh, some of the others. I've got a um, Four Pines one in there, and this is way better than the Four Pines one I bought the other day to try. With the Galaxy, you know, I mean, a lot of the Pacific Ales do use Galaxy, but it's very much like the Stone and Wood. I wouldn't say this is a clone at all. I'm just trying to uh, give you an idea of where this beer sits. Anyway, I wanted to get that out of the way before it went warm <laughs> and flat. So we'll have a quick look. Um, I'll show you a quick close up of the hot missile and putting it together and how it all goes together and what each part's for. Uh, we'll have a quick look at, the, at me using it, only a quick look, um, because that's in another video anyway, and I'll use it again in more videos. So here's the unit. Now this cage here could be mistaken for a place where you put hops, but you don't put anything in there. What it does is it just creates a larger surface area for the hops to push against and get filtered against when the wort's flowing through. Otherwise, you'd just have that small disc area and there'd be more chance of getting a blockage. It also has slightly larger holes there to allow wort to get through a bit easier. Now 
There's also a screen at the other end, of course, to stop hops going through the pipes. And when assembled, that screen will sit just above that outlet hole or inlet hole you can see just below the edge there. It's much easier to assemble this upside down like this than it is to try and turn it over and put the clamp around the edge. And it'd also be handy to have some sort of bucket that you could place it in or something just to keep it upright so you have both your hands free and don't have to worry about knocking it over. So these are the hops I'm using, Halito, it's a New Zealand Halito, and some Galaxy Cones. Those cups have 25 grams each, two are Galaxy and one is Halito. These seals sometimes can be tricky to fit, but this one seemed to go on quite easily. They need to be tight so they don't come off, of course. Make sure it's fitted correctly. Slide it down into the tube. Take your time. You don't want to dislodge the seal. Now these hop missiles are rated for about 85 grams of whole cones or flowers when used as a hop back like this. And around 115 of whole cones or flowers if you're using it as an inline hop infuser. Again it was just 75 grams I used here. As mentioned earlier easier to put the seal on and the bottom on when it's in this upside down position. I should have had a bucket to rest it in to make it a little bit easier for me to keep it in front of the camera when I was trying to do it up. Locked and loaded. All right. We have our wort in there. It's finished, it's been sitting a little while to settle. It's cleared, it's not so important. It's gonna get filtered through the hop missile. We go down into my pump. It's hard to see, then we come out of the pump, into the bottom of the hop missile. Up through the hops, into the plate chiller. Could be any chiller out of the plate chiller and soon that hose is going to be inside the fermenter. Now it's important here before you start to wet the hops first and that's okay too because I need to prime the pump anyway. So if I just open up the tap the wort will naturally of course via gravity prime my pump and will also make its way up into the hop missile just to get those hops wet before we start trying to force the wort through it. If you're trying to force the wort through really dry hops, you know, there's a, there's a, they could block. But here we can prime the pump and wet the hops in one go. Just chill your wort as normal. And when you're finished, there will be hot wort that will come out. You need to be careful. Everything will be hot unless you wait for it to cool down, of course. Oh, it smells good. I should dump this in the fermenter. So that's it. Are they 100% needed? No, of course not. So people might ask why I wanted one. Um, they're a bit old school. Well, I'm a bit old school too. But uh, 
for me, it's an easy way uh, of sort of copying or, uh, um, or simulating a hop back, which is what, you know, I'd probably say 90% or 75%, 90% of uh, craft breweries will use to add hops uh, and hop flavor at the end of their brews. And it's kind of one of the reasons it's a little bit hard to mimic, mimic some of the beers because some beers that craft beer is put out will just use the hop back or, or whatever. And it's a, it's a t bit of a different flavor. You can try and copy that by, you know, doing whirlpools. People do whirlpools now. And uh, whether they do it under 80 or over 80 or whatever it is, um, that's sort of trying to mimic it. But it, I don't think it's exactly the same. You get sl a slightly different flavor, I think, from running the hops through a leaf hop. It's just different and it's really nice. One other thing I wanted to mention, which isn't really to do with the hop missile, it's to do with the little spanner that they give you to tighten up the bottom of the hop missile. Last time I was at uh, Keg King, I was actually, I found these, you know, tube clamps, pipe clamps, tube clamps, and I thought, oh, they look pretty good. I haven't got that style. I've, I've tried all the others and you know, usually the handle falls off or you, you've got a screwdriver and you're stabbing yourself in the hand. Well, maybe that's just me. But what I found with these ones with the stainless bolt, this fits exactly on it. And I tell you what, if anyone knows what it's like sometimes when you're struggling to get hoses on and off with, as I said, with a screwdriver and stabbing yourself or twisting it with a little a wing nut type thing that the plastic one that breaks off this is really really handy i found it so useful i'm actually going to go and buy some more of these clamps they're really good clamps too i'm not sure if they have them on their website or not i dropped into this store and picked them up but you know they're just a clamp they're just a clamp you can probably get anywhere but uh you know that's the only place i've seen them but i haven't looked at anywhere else so I guess that's a random tip. But for me, I found it really, really handy. The other thing to mention too, is it really is best with leaf hop. You can use pellet hops, but you'd have to add in a heap of rice hulls and, and sort of cross your fingers. I've never tried it. I probably won't try it. The other thing you can use this for is like a randle. So if you hook up a beer line, you can pump your beer out of your keg, you know, through this and then into your glass, through your tap and into your glass and get that really fresh hop or leaf hop flavor directly through this uh, into your glass. Um, if you haven't seen that set up, I can probably put some pictures up on the screen and you might be able to have a look. But um, it's a little bit of a muck around and you don't, you wouldn't want to leave it sitting there for months with hops in it. Um, you might want to change the hops out and you probably lose a fair bit of beer. But using it like a randall, um, I mean, it doesn't have to be hops either. You can put fruit in there, uh, all sorts of things. It'd be good for a party or something. Or well, if you know you're going to go through a keg pretty quick, or maybe a half keg, a nine litre keg, and you can fill this up with blood orange or you know limes or whatever and run your Mexican beer through it or something like that. All the usual stuff. Like if you like the video, subscribe if you like the video, share it if you like the video. Thanks to my patrons, thanks to my viewers, thanks to my subscribers. Cheers, stay safe. These shirts are available, link down below. Cheers.